With the aid of corrupt politicians, fossil fuel companies destroy the environment and the health of their workers and local communities. But today the government is colluding with coal companies to destroy history itself by blast mining Blair Mountain. Professor Chuck Keeney, thanks for joining me. Most people aren't familiar with the Battle of Blair Mountain. Can you quickly explain to us the historical significance? Yeah, the Battle of Blair Mountain was the largest uh, armed uprising in American history since the Civil War. It was this culmination of a, a series of events that we call the West Virginia Mine Wars. You had about 10,000 miners who marched basically from the state capital in Charleston, West Virginia, down to Logan and Mingo counties and basically destroy the mine guard system, which was basically this industrial police state. And in between them and the uh, the places they were trying to get to, the co-operators in their army, they set up a defensive position positions at Blair Mountain. And so the the coal company army and the miners army clashed for a few days at Blair Mountain until federal troops intervened. Okay. Now, in 2009, it mm-hmm. was listed as a protected uh, national historic place. Uh, Correct. Then some weird things started to happen. What happened? What? Yeah, it, it took a long time for Blair Mountain to be put on the National Register of Historic Places. There's a local by the name of Kenny King, and he is a amateur archaeologist, good friend of mine. He and I have worked together for seven years now, and he was the first one to really explore the area. And he began to find thousands, literally thousands of artifacts, shell casings, entrenchments, all kinds of little places where the battle had happened. And nobody had really explored this battlefield area before. And he began to compile all this evidence, and he tried to get the place put on the National Register of Historic Places. But no one would accept his work because he wasn't a professional archaeologist. The State Historic Preservation Agency wouldn't even look at his stuff until finally he got an archaeologist named Harvard Ayers from uh, Appalachian State University to go up and do a survey of just a small portion of the battlefield. And uh, they found a bunch of sites, they prepared a new nomination, and then it was accepted in 2009. Immediately after that, as you said, crazy things began to happen. Don Blankenship was CEO of Massey Energy at that time, and one of Massey Energy's subsidiaries is Aracoma Coal. And Aracoma Coal has one of the surface mines that's uh, on the battlefield. Now, there are three surface mining permits that overlap onto the battlefield area. One of those surface mining permits was headed up by Don Blankenship's company. And Don Blankenship personally threatened to sue every member of the State Historic Preservation Office if they didn't take it off the, the National Register. But in addition to that, a few day, uh, a month, uh, I should say, one month after it was put on the National Register, Jackson and Kelly Incorporated, which is the most prominent uh, coal-friendly law agency, law firm in, in the state of West Virginia. They usually actually uh, protect uh, the industry whenever miners try to file black lung claims. So if you have black lung and you try to get your benefits, it's Jackson and Kelly that tries to keep you from those benefits. Well, they also went to the State Historic Preservation Office and they gave a landowner list to the State Historic Preservation Office and said that more than half of the landowners were objecting to the listing of Blair Mountain. Now, we're talking about a 1,669 acres over a 10-mile stretch, and so there's a lot of small landowners, just private homes that own maybe one or two acres on the land. And so the first uh, landowner list was compiled, uh, and the majority of landowners were in favor. Then Jackson and Kelly comes along one month later with a new list and says this new list is the accurate list, and there are more than half of the people objecting, so it has to be taken off the National Register. Now, according to uh, the Historic Preservation Office's own regulations, and according to the Keeper of the National Register's own regulations, you can't even submit a list into, uh, after it's already been accepted. It's supposed to be at least 75 days prior to intent to nominate, so the list shouldn't have even been looked at to begin with. Somehow, though, Susan P. 
Pierce, the director of uh, of SHPO, that's what they call the State Historic Preservation Offices, SHPO for short, uh, Susan Pierce accepted this list and then forwarded that on to the keeper of the National Register, who then accepted the list also and then delisted the battlefield at the end of the year in December 2009. It should also be pointed out the director of SHPO, the State Historic Preservation Office, is appointed by the governor of West Virginia. And the governors of these states are very beholden to the coal companies. So that's one aspect of it. So this uh, strange landowner list, and this led to a lawsuit uh, that we won in federal court uh, a little over a year ago. Uh, and the judge remanded the decision back to the keeper. He called the delisting arbitrary and patricious uh, and capricious. Patri- <laughs> he called the delisting arbitrary and capricious, and uh, said that uh, they need to issue a new ruling. So we're waiting on that new ruling, and that's uh, when the public comment period is open until October the twenty sixth. But there's something else that's funny too. It's not just that the coal companies want rid uh, of this so that they can mine the coal, so that they can use surface mining on the site. They also want to get rid of the history, and a clever way of doing that is to play on people's local feelings of patriotism. So, uh, a few months after he gets put on the National Register through the Freedom of Information Act, the group I'm with, Friends of Blair Mountain, we were able to find out that the uh, National Guard wanted to put a base Uh, And this is to be a drop zone and a special ops training facility, Uh, two runways, one 4,000-foot runway and one 7,000-foot runway. They're going to crisscross one another. And this uh, base was to be built where the Camp Branch permit was or where it is. Now, not all of the Camp Branch permit go overlaps onto the battlefield. About 50 acres does. But the rest of it is going to be for this base. The base itself is not going to be on the battlefield. But Ericole McColl, which was owned by Don Blankenship at the time, or ran by him, they were going to blast a portion of the battlefield and then use that material to build a 7,000-foot runway. And these details were told to be by Major General James A. Hoyer of the National Guard. Uh, I met with him personally twice in 2013, and he told me all these details himself. And this uh, base, when completed, would be the largest of its kind east of the Mississippi River. So this was a significant uh, military base, special ops base, for uh, uh, going against global terrorism, to, to for the fight against global terrorism. So the thing about it is, in, in the West Virginia State Code, if a place is on the National Register of Historic places, you cannot surface mine it. It's exempt from being blasted. And so when it went on the list, they had to get it taken off the the National Register list in order to be able to build the runway for that National Guard base. And uh, Friends of Blair Mountain, whom I'm with, we, we have gone to court with them twice over this. We went to the West Virginia Surface Mine Board. We have battled them there, and we actually put a stop to it so that they couldn't go on Camp Branch until some issues are settled with the National Register. But it's been an enormously uphill climb. And um, Don Blankenship in the 1980s and 1990s was single-handedly responsible for really putting the nails in the coffin of the Union in West Virginia. He worked heavily to destroy the Union in West Virginia. And what more ingenious way of doing that than… Uh, using the military as an excuse uh, to destroy this property. At the original Battle of Blair Mountain, uh, the government came into uh, the, the uh, National Guard came into right. uh, to to aid the coal workers. Correct. Um, so and history is repeating itself. It's kind of scary. Let's see. The whole thing's been scary. When we first found out about it. We found out that uh, there had been some disturbances on the Camp Branch permit. Uh, there had been some places that had been clear-cut on the battlefield. And we looked uh, using Freedom of Information Act. We found the original permit. We found that they're not supposed to do any surface disturbances on the battlefield until the National Register issue is settled. But they were going up there destroying areas 
anyway. And they were destroying very specific areas. They said they were timbering, but they weren't just timbering. They were going a couple of uh, hundred yards uh, up to very specific areas where there were archaeological sites and timbering those specific areas. And uh, we uh, requested a citizen site inspection. We were eventually able to get one. When we went on there, one of our uh, board members, Joe Stanley, was threatened uh, to be shot by an out-of-uniform state trooper. They didn't let us take any pictures. They didn't let us film anything. And then it, uh, they threw us off the property before we even got to the areas that were disturbed. We went to the West Virginia Surface Mine Board. We're able, we won a unanimous decision, mir- miraculously, really. Uh, we won a unanimous decision and then got to go back to the site and then got to film some footage of the actual sites. And then because we had filmed it and we were kind of bringing some attention to it, it forced West Virginia DEP to put a halt on any operations uh, on Camp Branch until the National Register issue is settled. So we had a minor victory there in staving them off and, and, and preventing them and delaying things. Nonetheless, uh, they still want their runway, and uh, they've already got one of the two runways built, by the way. The 4,000-foot runway has already been built, and they're already using the site. Uh, in, in fact, uh, I, I've been told uh, that the British Air Force has even used the site. So yeah. it's all it's already a little bit underway. Yeah, the, and these um, these landing strips that they're building, <laughs> they're mm-hmm. the ones that they're using in Afghanistan. And in the letter, they're like, "Oh yeah, we need we want more, we need more landing strips, landing strips to train special forces because we want more Afghanistan's." I think the American people don't want to be in <laughs> the one Afghanistan. We don't want more. Right. It's, it's just absurd to think that this is in the people's interest that the people want this. Mm-hmm. Now, another messed up thing. In the new list of objectors that the Cole lawyers gave to National Park Service, what was funny about this list? Dead people were on this list. One person was dead for 20 20- Twenty years is that correct? Yeah, yeah. One person has been dead since 1983, and yet uh, that individual objected uh, to the listing of Blair Mountain. That's wow. correct. Um, now, dead people voting is something that's happened before in West Virginia history. Um, uh, Mingo County, some of these other counties have had dead people that continued to vote, but a lot of that has been caught. Uh, and so it's not a surprise that this has happened, but but. The flagrant disregard for uh, – it's, it's just such a, an abuse of power, the, this notion that they believe that they can truly just get away with it, that they can have dead people objecting to Blair Mountain, and somehow they can just sweep it all under the rug. And uh, in, in the letters that I sent you that we got that told us this information, you know, the letters are clear that the governor's office was very aware that all of this was going on. Uh, and the governor's office, uh, Manchin, Joe Manchin was the governor at the time that all of this was going on. And so they were very, very aware uh, of this. And there's no way that the head of the State Historic Preservation Office would have approved that second list had the governor not in some way, shape, or form given her a green light to do that. Now, I don't have direct evidence that that occurred, but it, it seems impossible to me that, uh, that that SHPO would have gone against their own regulations and accepted that second list unless somebody was prodding them. And it also makes me wonder about the keeper of the National Register, what happened there, because they went against their own regulations in order to accept the second list also. But again, if you go back to what General Hoyer told me, if this is indeed going to be the largest base of its kind east of the Mississippi, then people high up in the Pentagon have to know about this. People high up in the Pentagon have to be aware that it's going on, and they have to want it. And Department of Defense certainly has their uh, influence. Uh, Do we know specifically that they influence the keeper? No, we don't. But there's a whole lot of circumstantial evidence around that is rather fishy, Yes, to say the least. I agree. So how could they get away with putting dead people on their list of objectors to this and having the National Park Service go along with it 
and take the the battlefield off of the list of protected national <laughs> yeah, the, sites. The National Register. Yeah. National Register. And well, I know one way is through intimidation tactics. I heard some of the friends of Blair Mountain, the preservation group mm-hmm. that you're with, have been intimidated, hacked, had their life threatened. Tell yeah. me about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've gotten death threats, uh, you know, a few emails and and things like that. Other members have been threatened in person, face to face. We've had a couple of, of folks that have been confronted directly. Um, also, we've been followed around. Whenever we were bringing this up before the West Virginia Surface Mine Board, our lawyer uh, was uh, in meeting with Kenny King. Uh, they were followed to a Panera Bread outside of Charleston, West Virginia, and they were followed, and a guy followed them in and took pictures of them the whole time they were in the meeting. Uh, my mail has been opened. Uh, our lawyer's mail has been opened. Um and uh, so, and also, we've had other kind of strange incidents. My computer's been hacked five times, uh, personally, and and it's been hacked at very specific points in time when I really, <laughs> right before uh, a hearing or right before we're getting ready to do mm-hmm. something. It's 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 not random. Uh, uh, I've had technicians look uh, and check things out, and, and they've told me that. <laughs> You know, uh, er- everything you do is being watched, uh, and we can't figure out who it is that's watching you. Whoa! So um, it- it's uh, it- it's not as scary to me as it is upsetting to me because uh, you know I- I'm just a history professor. I'm not trying to. I, w- I wasn't necessarily trying to change the world here. I'm trying to preserve a battlefield. And uh, we're getting harassed. We're getting uh, our privacy uh, invaded. Uh, we're getting uh, threats of violence and all of these things for just trying to preserve something that is a no-brainer. Uh, you know, uh, everybody can agree that you should preserve something like this in a place like this. Nonetheless, we still have to deal with all with all of these additional issues. How much of that has to do with the base? How much of that has to do with the coal association? just wanting to get rid of the history? Is it a combination of these two things? It's very difficult to put your finger on it, but that's the problem in coal country. Uh, it's sometimes difficult to put your uh, finger on where uh, uh, where Big Brother is and who Big Brother is and, uh, and that kind of thing. So it's – it, it, it's it's stressful. Uh, I can tell you that, but at the same time, it hasn't really scared us. It it, it makes us more determined. <laughs> It makes me more determined, and I can't complain too much. My great-grandfather went through a whole lot more than I did uh, during the original mine wars. I mean, he lived in a tent for over a year. Um, he had death threats of his own uh, and against his own family, and and so he had to actually go to war. Uh, I haven't had to do that, thankfully, uh, and I'm glad for that. So, uh, well, This sounds like a war, Chuck. It sounds like a war. <laughs> Without bullets, we got, we got lawyers now, but uh – Sounds like a war is going on uh, for the Battle of Blair Mountain. Um, And, you know, it's inspirational to see you try and prevent this from happening with all this that's working against you. All these giant powers working against you. Federal government, private corporations. Can you tell me um, you've done a ton of stuff to try and stop this from happening, even gone Mm -hmm. so far as to visit congressmen's office? I did. I did. Can you tell me about that? Yeah. Um, we were trying to get a, rev- a resolution passed uh, by the West Virginia House of Delegates, and this was just a resolution saying that Blair Mountain should be preserved. It actually – if they passed the resolution, it actually didn't give Blair Mountain any type of real protection. It was just kind of a public relations try to think. Can we at least get them to admit publicly that it should be preserved? And so we were just trying to get a resolution passed, and I went into Delegate Mike Caputo's office. And Caputo uh, was supposed to be this guy who's had a long history of trying to help unions and has had a good relationship with the United Mine Workers of America. And I go into his office, and he's got a huge framed picture of my great-grandfather behind him uh, on on the wall. And it's a Frank Keeney and Fred Mooney. It's a very famous photo. It's all over the internet. Of you, It says UMWA uh, District 17 behind them, and you got the two of them standing right there. It's this big framed photo, and I thought, wow, this guy's going to be on my side. 
it. Uh, and so I go in and I'm feeling confident. And as I go into his office, sitting right behind him a few feet over is the head of the West Virginia Coal Association, Bill Rainey. And he's sitting there sipping on a cup of coffee and he just kind of grins at me, feeling completely non-threatened that, that I'm in there. It's also his number two guy, Chris Hamilton, was also there. And I, I walk in there and, and I try to get uh, uh, breach the, the subject with uh, Delicate Caputo and, and he wants nothing to do with me. And he's like, you know, sorry, uh, you know, I'd love to help out, but uh, it's it's late in the legislative session and we don't know if we can take anything else on. You know, he gave me this kind of polite runaround and uh, I had to really contain myself there <laughs> because I'm looking behind him at a picture of my great grandfather and then I'm seeing this individual give me an excuse for why he doesn't want to help that history out. But seeing the head of the West Virginia Coal Association sitting in the same office told me everything I really needed to know. Yeah. And uh, it's it just shows that it's so very difficult um, when you don't have money and you're trying to fight the powers that be that have a lot of money. Yeah, it's, it's very difficult to fight these forces without money. Um, that was just the... the uh Miners in 1921 were had to realize that in their situation, and they turned to violence. That was the only option they had at that point. Right. Um, and it makes you wonder. Maybe that you know has something to do with why <laughs> they don't want people to to remember this. Right. Uh, yeah. And it's the largest example of of people challenging the power structure in West Virginia. You know, Blair Mountain is uh, uh, it's it's the single greatest example of mountaineers standing up for themselves and standing up for their rights. And there are people who absolutely do not want that to be remembered. I don't have a rifle. Uh, I mean, I'm not advocating people to take up arms this time, but we do have social media. I hope everyone shares and gets this video out there. And the um, Park Service is accepting emails regarding the listing of Blair Mountain up until October 26th. That is correct. So yes. I'll leave the email Put it on the screen. What the keeper needs to understand is that the general public wants to see this preserved. And what we want the keeper to know is that they're being watched by us. They're being watched by the general public. Uh, they better not try anything, uh, and they better be on the level this time. And so if you're sending something to them, all you need to really do is say this is an important piece of history. It mustn't be destroyed. It's Labor's Gettysburg. If they know that there are a whole lot of people watching, then the, it makes it less likely that they can get away with accepting dead people uh, uh, objecting. Yeah. If the li if the living speak, the dead can't. So uh, that's kind of my motto for this anyway. So yeah, everybody send uh, an email, even if it's just protect Blair Mountain. Thanks, Chuck Keeney, for joining me again. Matt, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate you covering this.